Welcome to the Black Gay History Channel. Please share this video and subscribe to this channel for more captivating content. Shaka Kasen Sangakona, better known to the world as Shaka Zulu, was a 19th century South African monarch who made his mark in history by becoming one of the most influential and powerful Zulu monarchs during the colonial period of African history. What many may not know is that many historians think that Shaka, one of the most influential African figures in history, may have been attracted to men. Personally, I learned much of Shaka's story from the epic 1986 miniseries Shaka Zulu, which is a critically acclaimed retelling of Shaka's legendary birth, struggles, and rise to power. After surviving exile from the royal family in his youth, Shaka would fight for his right to become king in his youth and would reign from 1816 to 1828, consolidating much more power from the Zulu kingdom and gaining global notoriety for taking the Zulu kingdom to new heights of military power. I love Henry Sele's portrayal of the epic king and his stoic stone-faced persona he created for the king was apparently because of how ruthless the leader was when he ruled. For instance, when his mother, the queen mother, passed away, he decreed that mass executions take place for the nation to grieve. And though it is said he changed his mind, harsh stories of his rule are well documented. Though historians are still not certain, many may have speculated that he was in fact gay or same gender loving. We know that the Zulu had a culture of male warrior romance that was allowed and acknowledged within their ranks. The Izin Konshone were boy wives who warriors would marry and bring along to battles as guards who attended domestic duties. La Bonga is a Zulu term that means sex between warriors, which was obviously common enough for there to be a whole word to define this relationship. I also remember thinking as I recently rewatched the miniseries is that something was missing from the typical Warrior King storyline. It finally hit me that he had no love interest depicted in the series, which is a 10 episode series with several hours per episode. We know that Hollywood and media can't wait to pull from history to make a love interest. So such a powerful man like Shaka not having a wife or children was very telling. Not only would it have been uncommon for a king his age to not have any wives, it would have been noticed by his subjects. Shaka is considered one of the most demanding and brutal monarchs in Zulu history, and yet there are no stories of his trysts with women. There is no way historians would try to hide any of the women in his past, and in fact, it seems historians love to take note of the women powerful men in history take to bed. But you know what is usually hidden in historical stories? gay romances, which I can see easily being erased by his contemporaries and the Europeans he interacted with. It seems even Hollywood realized the lack of a heterosexual love story, which in movies usually accompanies the story of a powerful king, and it seems to then that they decided to write one in after the fact. In 2001, Henry Sillé reprised his role of Shaka in a not-so-historical film that oddly enough is totally fictional and tells the story of Shaka being captured by slave traders. But guess what they also added to the movie? You guessed it, a female love interest, ironically starring gay icon Grace Jones. I think it's telling that a whole fictional movie was created with a fake queen played by Grace Jones to muddy the story of Shaka Zulu for viewers today. We may never know the truth about what the legendary king's romantic desires were, but him being queer is a likely hypothesis.